The word is transmedia. T-R-A-N-S-M-E-D-I-A. Transmedia breaks down into two parts. So there's the word trans and the word media. Trans relates to movement, so it's uh, moving across something or between two things. Media relates to a form of communication or a form of expression. So put the two words together and it's narratives or audiences or experiences that move across different media platforms. So it might be moving from television to a laptop uh, and the internet. It might be moving from a comic book to a game or a film to a piece of theatre. Um, and transmedia is all of combining all of these different kinds of media platforms together to make one giant multi-platform narrative. Recently, Channel 4 created a lot of multi-platform content around the Paralympics, for instance. So they had YouTube videos in the run-up to the Paralympics where they talked to athletes. They even had auditions for new presenters put on YouTube that people could audition via YouTube. When the event happened, you had television, obviously, but then they also had a lot of online content, so you could watch events online. There was an impactometer for wheelchair rugby, so you could see how hard the players were hitting each other. They had an app to learn about the different disabilities and conditions that the athletes had. So you could move across from television to um, online platforms to apps. They had a, a mobile app as well, and they all created one kind of collective multi-platform experience for watching the Paralympics. Channel 4 also did something for Fresh Meat, the drama about first year students at university. And they, they created an online version of the house where you could go and find new pieces of content. So there were short videos where the characters would talk about what had been happening in the TV episode. There were song lists, for instance, they released the soundtrack through a Spotify song list in this virtual recreation of the house. So in many ways transmedia is quite new. It's something that has emerged out of the development of new technology. So the computer and the internet, iPads, laptops, portable devices, portable media devices. But there's a long legacy that predates new and digital technologies. People have been telling stories in different formats and multiple formats for years. Stories like King Arthur, for instance, one of the oldest legends has been told through oral storytelling. It's been told through paintings. It's been told through books. It's been told through plays. It's been told through television, through film, even through places with areas like Tintagel in Cornwall. So in many ways, transmedia has a long heritage. It has a long kind of history. Within scholarship, it first started really being used in relation to things like children's media, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the toys and the games and all the things that you could buy for your children if they were really into the turtles, um, that they could watch the cartoon, but they could also go and buy the little action figures and they could go and play the games and buy various merchandise around it. So that's when it first started being used in scholarship by someone called Marsha Kinder. Um, but it's really taken off and really expanded as a kind of concrete um, narrative idea within the last 10, 15 years or so. Practitioners and broadcasters have really started thinking, well, how can we construct these narratives that are com only really complete when they're across multiple platforms? So what can the internet do that television can't do? What can a game do that a film can't do? Um, and that's really where transmedia has taken off, is the more recently with um, narratives that work as a whole collectively um, but have really make use of the, the characteristics of each individual platform. So on the one hand, you've got the broadcasters uh, doing things in connection with television, but then you've got much smaller, sort of more theatrical-based experiences as well that might be a piece of theatre that lasts a couple of months even, and you play games in it, you answer quizzes, you take part on missions. This was an alternate reality game called the Malthusian Paradox um, that a company called Urban Angel and Covernomics ran um, in the last three months or so of 2012. What players had to do was they had to go to public events. So it started off with a lecture where this scientist got kidnapped. They watched a series of videos online. So there were some quite traditional media forms involved as well. But then there were some more experimental things. So during the Game City Festival in Nottingham, they would come and meet actors in character. They would be given missions. So at one point they had to go to, I think it was a, a cafe, and meet an agent and collect a Scrabble tile. And then they had to come back to a stall in Game City and put the Scrabble tile on the Scrabble board, which then slowly revealed a, a secret message. At one point they even got kidnapped by actors and interrogated. Uh, so there was a lot of 
very experimental narrative forms being combined to try and create quite a complex story world that players sort of lived for three months in effect. Um, and a lot of that kind of bled over into real life. So they would see the actors um, around Nottingham anyway when they were outside of the game. But the game suddenly started up again when they met them and they were talking to them in character. And then it ended with a final video that kind of wrapped up everything and set up a potential sequel. So it was very experimental and it was very complex as well. It was a, a big production challenge to actually manage all of these different events and keep some kind of coherency. We can kind of think of things like television, film, theatre, books, comic books as being expositional. They tell us a story and we read it, we watch it in a relatively sort of step back way. What transmedia allows you to do is create what we can call experiential drama and experiential narrative, where rather than being told a story, you live it and you experience it and you put yourself into that narrative world and you're uncovering it by talking to people or by reading a leaflet that you might find in a cafe. It's not something that you're engaging with from a sort of slightly step back point of view. You're actually put into the story world in a way that doesn't really happen in film and television partly because the technology doesn't allow that to happen. You sit in front of a screen and you watch it. Um, so it's where that kind of boundary of the screen almost starts to break down um, and practitioners are able to kind of play around with what the experience of narrative actually is um, and how we can understand narrative and how we can get story worlds and experience fiction in a very different way rather than being told we actually live it and do it ourselves.